Hi, my name is JQ and I'm a makeup artist for the film and television industry. Today I'm going to be doing a character makeup. Make sure you do your skin prep according to the makeup that you will be doing on your actor model. Today we're going to be using some generic pieces. These are out of kit prosthetics by Stevie Beetles. They are encapsulated silicone prosthetics. Um, they are acetone based. They come in different sizes and different skin tones. He has an array of skin tones available and they also do color matching. These prosthetics are like a band-aid. If you know how to use a band-aid, you can apply these prosthetics. They have uh, paper backings and are adhered to that backing and you just peel one side of it away and anchor it to the area of the face that you desire the prosthetic to be and then you carefully and slowly peel the other side away and press that side down. I like to use the back of my brush to roll my edges down and really get them to adhere to the skin and then melt my edges away with um, properly sized pointed or rounded q-tip. These um, pieces that have stitches in them are pre-stitched. They come pre-stitched on the piece. And because they're silicone, unlike a prose transfer, they uh, stay in better condition because they don't stick to the prosthetic themselves. They're already set in the silicone. Uh, here you can see that I'm using a mascara wand to take the edge down because I'm actually bringing the silicone that I am melting off with acetone through the fibers of each of her eyebrow hairs since the prosthetic goes into her eyebrow hair since it's a little bit too large for her face. So these pieces are about two years old. Um, they are different colors. You can see that yellow one that I laid down to create that lump on her cheek. Especially with bruising I can just create the coloring desired, um, despite the fact that this has three different tones, a yellow, a mid-tone, and a light on her right cheek that you can see here. So just use the piece's tone in itself if, you know, it's proper, like yellow undertones are with bruising, and make the piece work with your makeup, not against it. You can absolutely color correct the piece, but it's unnecessary. Just go ahead and start your paint job and work smarter, not harder, when it comes to coloring. And if you don't like it, you can always take it back to the skin tone desired. Prior to the makeup, I prepped my facial hair that I was going to be hand laying. It's a combination of human and yak hair and I just made sure to get it the proper texture for the beard that I was going to be applying. So here I have some lace pieces. I ended up not using the sideburns that you're seeing. I used her sideburns and a combination of laying the hair to blend the two together um, and human and yak hair for the hair laying aspect of the makeup. You know, I don't like to put prosade in a lace piece because the glue is impossible to get out of the lace and Super Baldies makes it very, very easy to clean after you have removed it from the actor and have to get out of the makeup trailer because they want you to get off the clock but you have to make sure that beard is sanitary and that the glue is going to be cleaned from the lace piece so that it's ready to be applied the next day. And that it's clean and can easily be styled before your actor gets to the chair. So 
So I'm just laying my blend edge. Every beard needs a blend edge. It adds realism to the beard since growth looks more natural when you randomly apply it onto the face. Of course, you know, you don't want to mess with continuity. But a blend edge helps hide lace, especially if you're working with a beard like this, where it's used for stunts and maybe the edge isn't as nice as it could be and doesn't lay as flat or um, is too close to the knots of the hair. do my blend edge in two steps. I'll do it first before I apply the mustache and then so here I'm applying the mustache again with super baldies. Um, it has you know been colored and you know slightly pre-styled wet set to get the shape um, knowing that it was again too large for her face. It's very wide mustache very long um, and also was going to need to be trimmed into the beard. So blendages are important to refine styles and really shape that beard onto that person's face. Here I'm applying some small details for my character, um, some face tattoos that are aged and imperfect because of where my character has been in life. After I lay my beard, I like to do all of my details and just layer and layer and layer details onto the character. Um, layer coloring, layer textures, and tattoo placement, um, minute scratches and any small details to this character that I can add. Sometimes you'll go over a surface more than once. Sometimes you'll go over it more than 10 times in the same makeup, just getting the color that you want. I like to pre-paint my blood just a little bit with some alcohol colors. Add step to your blood allows it to run off in different places while you still have a good paint job underneath it. Your underpaint can be everything. Just why you oftentimes layer and layer and layer your paint jobs, even on the simplest makeups. I created these particular tattoos for a film for um, different types of gangs and groups, hate groups, and I had some leftover pieces here. So these were made by me, um, and they were never seen really in anything because they were all on background. But it's important to have those details on everybody in certain films. After that, you know, use hair and costume to balance out your character makeup.